happy holidays. Welcome to American Tissot Presents Free Friday Webinars with me and sometimes my wonderful sidekick, Rosto the Pug, or maybe I'm his sidekick. Uh, today we're going to talk about teaching language with videos and there's some great resources and tips so you can integrate video. Now some of you um, we have a big audience from all over the world, Hungary, uh, we have Morocco, we have the U.S., we have Turkey, we have the Dominican Republic, we have Portugal, so everywhere, uh, different places, so it's great to have that. And one of the great things about video is whether you're having your students take a video, create a video, and it's very easy to do that. Um, and back, we used to do it with our digital cameras. And before that, I used to do it with the camcorder. It's not a teaching technique that gets old. YouTube is one of the largest. Um, and it's also one of the oldest social networks that doesn't get really old. Um, you hear how people went from MySpace to Facebook and then Twitter. They say that it's not going to exist. And, but the great thing is that with YouTube, um, it seems like it's in for the long haul. It doesn't seem to be something going away. So there are a lot of ways we can use videos um, to really teach our learners and make it a great experience. Uh, we're going to talk a little also, it, this will be useful if you do flipping the classroom. Why use video? Well, a lot of us may teach a diverse group. We may have low literacy. We may have different levels. I've been teaching since 1994. Um, learners from the ages of 2 to 80 years old. I've had classrooms um, in Germany and in Greece and I'll be teaching in Venezuela and Slovenia and um, Croatia. So I've st uh, taught a number of students all over the world. I've actually trained teachers physically and uh, worked with students in over 26 countries so that's very exciting. Um, so it's really great. The thing about video, and video is one of the things I go to, and one of the reasons why is because um, it's, and I like what Dan Patterson says, he says that humans are incredibly visual, powerful, and moving images helps us find meaning. The great thing is also it doesn't lose, it's, um, it's a great methodology whether you're working with two-year-olds all the way to 80 years old you can always integrate video in the classroom because it's something that captures all of their attention so it's one of the things you can work use no matter what teaching situation you get to now one of the newest forms of it, that's kind of come out and you probably had your students do this but it's a new word and it was invented by someone that I think is really wonderful in English language teaching, which is Jamie Ketty. And Jamie Ketty recently did a, like a TEDx talk. But one of the things he came up with was he termed a, an instructional practice, and it's called video telling. And to him and his video telling project, and you can go to videotelling.com and find tons of great lesson plans. And I'll show you the site in a bit. Um, but not only is it free lesson plans, but he gives you student examples. He shows you how he uses these with his students. But what he has done is telling you, he says, um, he uses videos, short videos, that tell that tell stories but that's not only part of video telling the methodology because now it's catching on this year you can go to videotelling.com videotelling.com you see Jamie working with his students and introducing and teaching a video and he gives you videos you can share with your language learners um, but the other great thing that Jamie does is then he shows you the examples this that his students so his students go back and they do something with the video. Now, I think that's really the part that we're going to focus on because we've actually done several, and you'll see in the bookmarks, you, you'll see where you find several different types of examples of using um, videos to really share. Um, and, and so there's a pearl tree, so you can go and you can find all the bookmarks at the end here um, that I'll share with you that you can be able to do that with. Um, but the thing about it is that it's the do. So this is more like the task after. What are they going to do? And there's a lot of things they can do. But I like kind of um, Ian James. He just came out with the site this week. And it's called ViralELTVideoWordPress.com. 
And what he does is he tells you some of the activities that you can do when you teach with the video. That's what I really like about this particular website. But Ian James, who's based in Barcelona, like Jamie Caddy, and a great teacher, I, I tweet a lot of his posts. So he's great with ed tech. Is he, um, he, I like his definition of video telling, which is basically your students how they will tell the story of a video orally. And I think that's really important. So it's not only getting your students to watch this video, but how are they going to interpret the vocabulary, the language, and the plot of what you're particularly trying to teach them. And so with his, he shows you different videos, like this cat one, um, this guy, the bus, and he, he puts those on the site, a bunch of beautiful ones. And then he gives you ideas. He gives you write-ups, how they can write short paragraphs, giving reactions, opinions, which is part of video telling. He gives you predictions, um, how, how you can stop a video, and that's one of the techniques, that when you're playing the video, how you stop it in the middle, and then you ask your students, okay, how is this going to end? What's going to happen next? And you have your students all write down a different type of, of a way that the video is going to end. And you get them interested that way with the prediction. And then they compare. They compare and contrast. They see who won. They, you can even have them if you use. Um, it's really easy to get them to write this on paper. But you can use different types of, and I'll show you those feedback tools like, Padlet or Linoit, and you can have them write their predictions there, and everyone can see it on the screen, and you can see which video actually um, prediction won. Speculating, playing the sound only, and where they imagine what happens. Now, remember, this is from Ian James. He's on Twitter, um, but this is viral ELT WordPress. Thank you for putting that. Yeah, he just came up with it this week, uh, Peggy. So um, if you go to twitter.com, he is IJ64, and really great. I love Ian Jeans. Um, and so these are his ideas. He's talking about playing sound only, and then you, the students have to imagine what is happening, what's happening in the video. Role plays, where they end up being two people in the video, or some of the characters, and they end up going back and showing scenes. And you can do that with your students and say, okay, now do this scenario with these characters if they were in this scene or that setting. So there's things you can do. And also how you can use video. So you can find all of those things with lots of viral videos and Ian James' new site. What are some other type of activities that they can do? So we're going to talk about the different stages. And I like to, since we only have 30 minutes, what are the different stages, how they can do, what they can do as a pre-task, during the task, and then also while they're watching the video, what can they do to, what can you do um, for them to introduce the video, to really get the definition of that? And that's a good question. Peggy George says, what's the definition of viral video? Viral video is when there's a video and it, it takes off and people really share it a lot. So it tends to have millions of views. You can have some for 100,000, 200,000, but it's sort of like the cats. If you see anything with a cat, usually that's a very viral video. I share a lot with pugs. There's some viral videos of pugs out there. I'm hoping Roscoe um, becomes so I think that it's usually, yes, it has to surpass a number of type of views. It's usually about, I'm going to show you one that I teach with a lot that I think is great for all language learners. It's the two babies. They're twin babies, and they have a conversation. They go, da, 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 and I love that video for teaching language students. So what are some of the activities? What are they going to do? And that's what I love about these sites is that Jamie Ketty and both Ian Jeans get students to use the language in the video. They just looked at the video, they just saw, they understood it, they had a discussion, but then they have to orally present. And that's really important for language learners, that's really important. If you're teaching a video with science or math, it's important that we get them to take that knowledge and to interpret it and put it in a presentation. So I really want to focus on that. It's not enough to just have a discussion. We can't just end there, we have to do something with the knowledge and take it to that level. So how do we do that? So here's a few ideas. You can back channel. Back channel is when you're playing a video and you have all of these students go on one side, like the prediction would be a good one. Linoit.com, it works on every single device. It's really great, it's really nice and wonderful. 
Um, you have Padlet.com. I really love the layout. You can put it as a world map. You can put it. So one of the things that I had for my students that they did after they saw a video, we saw this video of a tragedy. It was during the Japanese um, tsunami. And I, uh, we showed those. And then uh, they were interviews. And I said, OK, find an interview of a, or you can post um, a, tr um, a tragic weather event that you witnessed, that your family was a part of, or that really impacted you. And so they were able to go to Linuit and Padlet. And uh, we had a Linuit. And they were able to post those like from different things in the world that they had remembered. Um, so that was a reflection. They had seen this video about a guy who had this um, a weather. He was skiing through this avalanche and how it just came upon him suddenly. And it was this like, you know, what he went through. And they had to find interviews that went um, about, you know, the different um, victims from the weather. And then they had to go and they had to role play that as well. They had to um, role play if they were someone in this weather event, um, what they would do, what would be the story. Um, so I thought that that was a good one. Padlet. Padlet is a good way to do feedback too. You can do collaborative feedback. Uh, I mean, poplet.com. Um, poplet, you can do this on the web. You can make it collaborative if you do it on the web. All your students can be a part of that. So it's great so you can show it all in one place. You can use some other ones too. You can do visual mapping. And next week, we're going to talk more about how your students can. So if you don't have a lot of technology, or if you do, because there are apps where you can write on your iPad or your um, Android. One of them is Evernote. Evernote. Edubuncy, one of my new favorite apps. It's free. You can write. You can add audio. It's fantastic. So you can make, or you can make these with pen and paper. So it's something while they're um, watching a video, they can make this of the video, especially if it's a long one. Let's say you want to use something like a TED Talk. So next week, we're going to talk about note taking. You'll find all of these tools, of course. So um, you don't have to worry necessarily that they're there right now for you because you will find them. Um, but the other one, of course, is that you can um, have them easily. One of the things you can do is make comments. So this is the one where it has the babies. I love this lesson, and I got my students to get together. And then you can use commentbubble.com, and everybody can see the captioning. But they kind of say, OK, so one of them is the first twin baby, and the other is the twin, because they do this video, and you can really teach them about nonverbal, and they have to caption it. So commentbubble.com is really good for captioning. Now they can say, like, hey, because he goes, da, da, da. So one student, well, and my students really love writing all of these things down and coming up with the, and it's great because you can even teach business students. Well, what is nonverbal? How do we do interjection? And, you know, how do, how, it's important that our body movements, match what we're saying. And I think the video really shows that because the baby goes like this and goes da da da, da 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 da. So it's really, really hilarious and a great lesson. One, some videos really lend themselves to te telling you what it is that you can teach. It makes it pretty easy. So for example, one of the lessons ideas, so sometimes it's good to replicate the video. The whole steam manifesto. I'm um, I'm writing a lesson about this right now. You can use, for example, if you're working with little learners, you can use the same idea where they watch the "Be Awesome" video by Kid President, um, and he's eight years old and he's doing this video that's sort of like the whole steam manifesto. So what it is is they tell you how to live your life. You can go to Hosting Manifesto. They have the YouTube video. You can click watch the video. Your students can see it. And then they're inspired. And this is a good one to do now because they or even in January because this is like their life goals, how they're going to live their life. And that's kind of the what we think about in January. And your students can go and then they can make their own manifesto. They can say, how am I going to be awesome this year? How am I going to be like the whole Steve? What kind of changes? And they have to make this word poster. They can use some great tools. You can see a bunch of these me manifestos. This was part of the 30 Ghost Challenge. I think Fabiana might have. Hi, Fabiana. Thank you for your wonderful post recently. I have to share it later. 
Um, but there's lots of different types of manifestos out there that pe teachers did all over the world. You can use some great lessons. You can use edgy buncy. You can use word cloud tools like Tagu, where they can make their. Um, you can use pic collage. You can use um, canvas. Um, there's so many great tools, and they're actually all of this you can find right now if you go to um, the Pearl Trees. So I'm going to go ahead and, of course, share that Pearl Trees. It says flip video because this is all part of, um, you know, you can flip the classroom as well. So I just put the bookmarks there as well. So don't worry, you have to bookmark all this. How are you, okay, so now we thought about what you can do during, how can you, you can do after the video, but how are you going to introduce the video? How are you going to get them interested? Because that's the key, is they have to like or they kind of have to have a reaction to the video. They can dislike the video, but they have to pay attention. So how are you going to get them to pay attention? Well, you get them interested and engaged. You know, let's be honest, a lot of our students aren't going to like every single video that we like. So it's great to have these sites that give you all these lessons and ideas. And these teachers, our language teachers, have tested this before. So how do we introduce it? Well, one of the things, and I love this from Jamie Ketty's site. Jamie has not only done this uh, video telling, but Jamie Ketty has also done lesson stream. Org, and that's full of lesson plans, PDFs this long that you can print, that you can have out, and they're great lessons. And they all have a YouTube video, and they have the pre-task, they have the after-task, and you can adapt it any way you want. So I think that's really great. So what Jamie does is he says, create a scene. Students go and they walk in. They're about to see a video about a guy who ends up looking like he's dead. But this guy's not dead, so they walk around, they see this body outline, and what they do is they go out and they say, hey, um, your students walk around into this, and then they're, uh, they start off by asking questions. Is he dead? They have to answer questions. Is he dead? And then they give their opinions. So I think this is great. They create a scene. There's so many ways you can create a scene to come in and introduce your video. Um, and so that's, uh, you can think of that, rearranging the classroom and stuff. Um, there's different places where you can create lesson plans and find lesson plans. One of them that's new to me that I just learned about is edpuzzle.com. And I've been giving it a lot of uh, love this um, week. You'll see it on my Twitter stream. I shared a post by Erzge. I shared last week a post, I think, by um, Richard Byrne. So it's one of these new sites where you can get other teachers' um, videos. And their quizzes. They actually have quizzes they made or lesson examples. So um, your kids, your students can actually create their own interactive content, a quiz or something with the video they just saw. So this is what it is. You can do what is the boy doing now. You can give um, your own voice narrative to it. So you can even flip the classroom with this. You can take these videos, you can have your students go, and they can answer the questions. They can edit it. They can do things like take the ending and redo the ending. Tell the story or make a video that's a story from another person's point of view. So there's so many things you can do with video. Ed Puzzle gives you ideas. Another one to help you create um, interactive videos, um, question videos, is Blubber TV. So there's Blubber.tv. Um, you can take any YouTube video, and they have a whole bunch that are free for you to use as well. I found this one for Business English. I thought this was awesome. It's an actual interview. Two people go in an interview, and then you can ask questions about the interview. In the first seconds, what two things did she do wrong? So these are good questions. These are the kinds that make students reflect and think, okay, in an interview, what did she do wrong? And then they can they can answer. They have so many seconds. You can um, use this definitely in a flipped way, or they can go ahead and they can do it themselves. You can flip videos. Now, we actually have, if you go to the Pearl Trees, you're going to see uh, where we have uh, webinars that we did on flipping the classroom. Um, so it tells you a little bit more. But basically, flipping is when you t turn it around. You have your students watch the video at home um, or when they're away from school. And you give them usually a short video. They, uh, most people who flip their classes say no more than nine minutes, OK? Um, and then they come back and they, they and if they, you did it with a quiz, like Comet Tube 
or you did it with um, something like Blubber TV, then they really answer questions and get to understand the video. Like you could do Blubber TV and you interrupt it a bit and then they watched it, but they also reflected on it. So you can make sure that they reflect on it. So you have them come to the classroom already watching the video and then you do the activity in the classroom. I started flipping even before flipping was there, and you probably did as well. Um, so a long time ago in Germany, about 2004, I created this uh, wiki site. And what I would do, I even did one for my young learners. Um, and what I did was I would embed the videos. I would give them a grammar practice and things, and they could choose. They could choose to do this if they want. If they didn't want to do it, they didn't have to. So people, um, it was kind of for extra practice, but also to get them to be part of it. So where do you find videos? Um, another place, you, another way you can can kind of flip the classroom. There's tons of ways. You do Bunsy, all these things. But the problem you have with that is you you know you need a place. So you can do a wiki. Or now there's great tools like EduClipper.net, which is like a Pinterest. Um, and what it does is allow you to put the video, and then you can put like a PowerPoint slide there. Um, you can put everything on one board. You can even like a Pinterest, you know, you can have the video, the video plays, you have the um, quiz if you want them to do a quest or reflection questions or maybe a bookaroo um, where they have to add their video comment. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Um, have um, PDF, I mean, there's so much you can do when you're giving them the lesson at home. Edubuncy.com is a great way to give lessons, flip classroom lessons. Edubuncy is one of my favorite tools. You always hear me talk about it. It's really awesome. They have a new free iPad app where your students can draw, they can record their voice, and they can make interactive posters like Glogster on their iPad, free and easy. It's so cool. I love it. Um, Blendspace.com, you notice how it's in order and with this one. So you show the video, you give um, questions, they, you know, you give them things that they do. It goes in order. So all of these are free tools to really, um, oh, Educanon, thank you, Peggy, because I hadn't heard of that site. So now I'm going to add that to our resources as well. Educanon for making great tools. Yeah, it's really you know, the thing is that you find more when you get a flip classroom one. But um, the great thing about working with video now is that there's so many sites where you can create a video, you can have interview. And now you can just take from other teachers that have made that and have given it to you. They have databases, like literally thousands. You could teach a video every single day and never have to make one. You would never have to make a lesson either, and they're great lessons. So where can you find video lessons, especially for language learners? Well, there's a couple of sites. Uh, one of my favorites I already mentioned to you is LessonStream.org. It goes by, the great thing is on Jamie's site, this is one of my favorite sites in the world because he has great lessons. It's not just an ordinary lesson where you come into the classroom and it's like, well, okay, my students might know his stuff is really good. It's amazing. And that's why I was sharing the video telling stuff because I think that Jamie really understands what it is to work with language learners. And it's a great thing you can use for all ages. Um, the other one that you can do a lot uh, with Jamie's, and specifically language learning, is that you can have you can look by intermediate, the level. You can look at what it practices. Um, is it practicing picture telling? Is it practicing reading, writing? So you can really uh, put in the different skills. You get free PDFs for every single one of them, a video. I mean, it's really nice. You can do age level. So there's so many. I even looked for some for kids, if I can do stop motion for kids, and I found some. Designerlessons.org. So they have other lessons as well. They have someone about video, really critical thinking. Um, here they do one called Our Story, a group formation and introduction activity. So what they do is they talk about skylines. They see, they take pictures of their own skyline and they how, talk about, you know, what it means in the city and the different buildings. And so they have really good lessons here. Designerlessons.org. All these lesson plan sites are free. You find hundreds of lessons. They're really fa fantastic. And there's literally hundreds of them on each site. So that's really wonderful. Um, Ed.ted.com. Okay, this is one of my favorite sites. It's not particular. You can find any subject. You can find science. You can find math. You can find physics. You can find anything. But the great thing about it is you can take some other teacher's lesson and you can customize it. 
you can take someone's lesson and you can adapt it and add and it's just great. You make another lesson with it and it's all within ed.ted.com. And you know how many of our adult students are you working with, um, adult language learners, TEDs are wonderful. They're great ways to really grab their attention. They have where they can watch, they can think, they can dig deeper, and they can discuss. So it's really, I think, a great idea. FilmEnglish.com, they just won recently the um, Elton Award, and they have this new conference called, um, I think, the Image Conference or something. But um, they won actually a couple of awards, and they have things here. They have the same idea, Visual Manifesto. They have a bunch of different on short films, so they show from video, from YouTube, or Vimeo, and they'll show you a short little film that comes about it, so it's really nice. What are some cool video studying tools? So if they're there and they want to study on video, well, there's quite a few. Um, you have English, so if they want to go out in their own um, and they want to study, then there's ways to do that. There's EnglishCentral.com, one of my favorite sites in the world. It's amazing. It's One of the reasons why is because they practice pronunciation. So not only do they watch the YouTube video, they're in competition with everybody else on the site, and there's literally hundreds of thousands of people on this site learning English. And all they do is they record what they hear on the YouTube, and it rates their pronunciation so they can keep practicing. Pronunciation is one thing you have to drill. It's something you have to keep practicing at and move your mouth. And so with this one, it's so wonderful because on this, they record and it's free. It's so awesome. I think there is where you have to. But they speak it and then it records their voice and gives them a rating and they keep practicing till they, so these are some study ways that they'll study English. Lyricstraining.com. What is a better fun way for your teenagers or even middle school students students or students in general to practice English than by singing. So here it's they listen to music and then they play. They have to fill in the blanks. They can go from beginner level. It has all the way to an advanced level. It makes it harder. So this is the beginner level I did. It shows them different videos. Now with this particular video on English Central, these are more for adult learners. These are if you have teenagers on up because little kids, um, they don't have these kind of videos um, that are made for them that are, um, they don't have like um, a younger one. So they may see, you know, for example, uh, videos where, not bad videos, of course they're made for students, but video, videogenary.com is a video site where they take videos to represent um, different types of vocabulary. So you can use that as a resource as well if they don't ever understand a term, they can go and they can see a short video that gives it the ideas. Playphrase.me, so they actually play a game where they have uh, different phrases. Now, this is definitely more of an adult, um, teenagers, um, really, you know, um, uh, in some countries, you know, with teenagers, you can show them videos like this. Um, adults, university students, and these are going to become the ones that are really good. Uh, Zaption, okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and add Zaptions to the resources. Every time you share, you get to share with everybody here because I take the resources and put them in our um, bookmark. So that's awesome. Um, YouTube transcripts, you may not know this tip, but here, any video. So let's say you fall in love with the video. I do all the time. Jake, who is around here somewhere, is always showing me the coolest videos, and I'm inspired. I'm like, oh, this inspired me. I get to inspire my students, so I need to make a lesson with this. Sometimes you do that. You run across a lesson someone shared, and you're like, I have to make a lesson. Well, if you're working with language learners, you can always choose the transcript option on your YouTube videos now. They add transcripts. Sometimes you have to work with them because I found that. I wanted one where they took the lyrics of a music video and they made their own viral video. And so you have to take them and you have to check them because, and that could be something for your students. That could be the first thing you do to get them in groups and to take sections and they have to fix the transcript because the YouTube one isn't very good. There are tons more to um, if you go to bit.ly YouTube tools, but of course you can find all of that if you just go to the Pearl Trees, which now I'm adding Zaption and all of these other great sites um, that you showed me 
PBS and um, Peggy shared another interactive one. I'm going to book that one right now. So thank you very much, me and Lazy Roscoe. We'll see you after Christmas. So happy, happy holidays. Whether you, um, happy Hanukkah, Diwali, Kwanzaa, and a Christmas to you. Here's my little present. We will see you next week when we talk about how to do note taking so your students learn cognitive um, language where they learn um, how to do academic language. And we are super excited. Uh, you can always get my new book, The 30 Ghost Challenge for Teachers and Learning to Go. They have lots and lots more ideas. And you can always bring someone, download the slides, um, and have great things with American TESOL. So, See us next week. I'm going to stop the recording.